Welcome to another Simutech Group Tips and Tricks video. In this episode, we'll look at a transient simulation where we have multiple load steps. First, a static preload step with time integration turned off, and then a transient step where we have time integration turned on. We'll be specifically focusing under analysis settings and output controls to affect the number of substeps that are stored into the results file on a per load step basis. So if we take a look at our model here, um, we see that we have a couple of remote force loads and a fixed support around the OD of this bushing type part. So our first remote force is just a, a ramped uh, static load up to 70,000 pounds force. Our second remote force is a sinusoidal load. Go to our analysis settings, we have two steps. In the first step, we've got that highlighted here in the graph view. You see we have time integration turned off, and then under output controls, the default for storing results is all time points. If we click the second step here, we'll see that we've got the same setting under store results at all time points. So if we go ahead and solve the model, with these settings. Look at solution information and force convergence. We see that in our first load step, our solution is converging. Take about 10 steps to complete the first load step. at the end of our first step. It is 0 0.01. The time end at the end of our transient step is 0 0.02. Go back to solution information. We see that our first load step is completed and we're now converging in the second load step or the transient step. Okay, I'm just going to interrupt this solution so we can take a look at what we have as far as result sets. Come down and look at directional deformation. You see that we've got approximately nine sub-steps for the first load step. And we can go ahead and look at the uh, final result set in the first load step. And you'll notice that we have approximately 10 substeps in the second load step. And we can retrieve those results as well. So if we can assume this was a much larger model and we wanted to store a lot of result sets in our transient step, we may want to cut down the number of steps that are stored in that first static step just to save disk space. So we can go back to our analysis settings, select the first load step in the graph view, and we'll come down under store results at, and we're going to select at the last time point only. And then we'll select step two in the graph view, and we'll go ahead and make sure that we're still storing results at all time points. So we'll go ahead and clear our solution solve the model again. And look at our force convergence and that should be identical to what we saw last time. So we see now that we've converged a couple of sub-steps in that first load step. And our first load step is now completed. And we're converging in the second load step. So I'll go ahead and let this Solve a couple more sub-steps, and then we'll take a look at the results as far as what sets are available for viewing under solution. So we've got about 10 or 12 sub-steps in the second step that have converged, so we'll go ahead and interrupt the solution and take a look at the results and what's available there. So if we again look at this same directional deformation, we look at the graph view, and there's evidently no intermediate substeps available in the first load step. That's what we'd expect. 
we look at our tabular data, we notice that the first set that's available is at 0 0.01. So that's the last sub-step of the first load step. And we can retrieve that result. And we notice in the second load step, we have essentially every sub-step in the results file. We can look at those as well. So also a couple of other options under analysis settings for storing the results. Um, at various intervals. In addition to the all time points and last time point, you have equally spaced points and a specified recurrence rate. With equally spaced points, the value field then becomes ungrayed out and you can specify, you know, for instance, uh, two sets at equally spaced points. So that would give you results at approximately halfway through that sub-step and then at the last point in the load step. The other option is a specified recurrence rate. So if you set this to value of 2, essentially you would be saving every other sub-step of the results. Thank you for watching this Simutech Group Tips and Tricks video.